So two days ago, Israel launched a bombing campaign dubbed Operation Protective Edge against Gaza that's still ongoing. But despite the horrors on the ground, the mainstream media seems to only be telling one side of the story. Take a look at this. From the Wall Street Journal, Israeli air defense intercepts more rockets as fighting continues. And the LA Times goes on to declare that Palestinian rockets reach farther into Israel. And lastly, the New York Times makes it seem like there's an equal playing field by stating Israel and Hamas simply exchange fire. Well, I guess I really can't expect more from a media apparatus that essentially works as stenographers for the U.S. government. Let's take a listen to what the issue is being framed by the White House. We strongly condemn the continuing rocket fire into Israel and the deliberate targeting of civilians by terrorist organizations in Gaza. No country can accept rocket fire aimed at civilians, and we support Israel's right to defend itself against these vicious attacks. At the, at the same time, we appreciate the call that Prime Minister Netanyahu himself has made publicly to act responsibly. Wait, what? Acting responsibly? I must be in the twilight zone because to me, the collective punishment of an entire population is the opposite of responsible. So what's the reality on the ground? Well, just in the last 24 hours, Israeli forces have conducted airstrikes that have struck 160 sites in Gaza, according to the IDF. In total, 550 sites have been bombed. And considering the fact that Gaza is one of the most densely populated places on Earth, with over a million inhabitants, any aerial strike conducted in the region almost certainly means civilian deaths. In fact, at the time of this broadcast, the strikes have killed at least 53 Palestinians, including eight children and an 80-year-old woman. According to the Palestinian Minister of Public Works and Housing, at least 50 homes have been destroyed so far and 1,700 damaged. So when the IDF talks about hitting, quote, Hamas targets, remember that Hamas is the democratically elected leadership of Gaza, which could mean any government building or social services for Palestinians. So while the U.S. government can go on and on about Israel's right to defend itself, take heed of the increasing death toll in Gaza and the fact that no Israelis have yet died as a result of Hamas rockets. Look, I denounce deadly force on both sides. But it's important to not frame this as a cycle of violence that's equal. One is the colonizer oppressor, the other, the colonized oppressed. As IDF General Son Miko Piled said just yesterday on the show, there are two choices for Palestinians in occupied territories to completely surrender or resist. And resistance is what we're seeing now. I'm sick of my Palestinian friends losing their friends and family every time Israel goes on the offense against innocent people living in an open-air prison. So if demolishing homes, conducting mass arrests, and bombing civilians is, quote, responsible, I shudder to think how many people have to die in order to define irresponsibility.